We will see today how to manage the weather in uh, Grand Designer. So for that we will use three tabs to the weather, ice caps and dessert. Uh, weather is uh, the place where you manage the more generic uh, parameters about the weather. So you, you can handle the moisture uh, and the temperature. So the moisture is used mainly for uh, sediment and uh, vegetation. So I will not talk a lot about it today. Uh, I will talk about more about the, the temperature and uh, and the other parameters we have here. So the temperature can be seen uh, over here in the heat map and you can see uh, colorized the temperature so in uh, white you have the coldest part in green uh, medium moderate uh, temperature part and in red the hottest part of the planet. Everything can be managed from these sliders here uh, because you can change the temperature on the pole, the spreading of the temperature on the pole, same for the equator and also for the high altitude temperature for the, the, the top of the mountains. So the temperature on the pole by default it's negative so if I reduce it even more you see it's uh, spreading a bit and it's uh, more uh, op opaque let's say and the spreading is just uh, how far th this uh, temperature goes. You can have positive temperature on the poles too if you want. Same for the equator uh, by default it's a positive temperature so I can increase the temperature so it's just burning the, the, the color here and I can change also the spreading. So if I have a very low spreading for boost the temperature on, uh, on the pole and the equator I will have a um, larger green part on the planet. You can also manage the temperature coming from the ocean. So for that I will just add some uh, water and raise the level here. So with that uh, activated I can change also the temperature from the ocean. So I'm just changing the heat here. By default it's just a little bit uh, hotter than the rest but I can increase that and you see that uh, everywhere where there's water it's hotter than uh, the land part and I can change also the spreading so it's just uh, if you are if you are in the in the coast or even a bit further from the coast then you can benefit from the heat of the water. You can do that on the other way around and having a very cold water and also change the spreading for the for that. Like this. And uh, once you've tuned that the temperature of the poles, temperature of the equator, you, you can also change the temperature uh, for very high uh, mountains. So the temperature can be lowered for very high mountains. I don't know if I have some here. Um, I can change the limit here and the spreading. Okay, like this. Yeah. So you can see that the, the top of that um, crater is very high and is very cold because I've put the temperature to minus uh, 1.5, uh, let's say unit. It's not, it's not really uh, degrees or whatever here. And by changing the, the limit, I can increase the, the fact that it's using D8 as a relevant part of the temperature computation and the spreading is just uh, how spread it the, the cold or the hot temperature 
of the high part of the planet is spread it uh, even for in the lowest part of the planet. For a very low value, I will have something that is very sharp. Uh, so I just have some part very cold here and uh, under that it's not really relevant. And uh, then I can uh, tune that uh, in, on a more global scale. So one thing that may help is toggling the axis so we can see where are the poles of the planet. And then you can change the center of the planet so you can offset basically where the equator is. So if you want to have something that is completely offset it with a very large uh, pole, very cold area, then it's quite easy to do here. So it will be totally asymmetric and you can go from one direction or the other. Then you have the Goldilocks offset. The Goldilocks is the zone uh, around the sun where the planet can be uh, ideal for life. So if you change the Goldilocks offset, basically you will either increase the heat of the planet or decrease the temperature of the planet. So I can increase everything here or decrease everything. So you can easily simulate the planet going from uh, very hot to very cold or stuff like that. You can also tune the randomness of the temperature. So if I increase that, it will be totally random and uh, the spreading will be less even than uh, than before. So I have some uh, cold zones that are going near the equator and stuff like that because I've increased the randomness. If I reduce the randomness, it's more regular and what you're expecting. So everything near the equator is hot, everything near the pole is cold. And when you have increased uh, the randomness, you can change also the scale of, of the randomness. So you, if for very low value, it will be very large mass uh, moving. For uh, highest values, you will have more uh, local changes. So you see, you have lots of uh, smaller blobs over here. And you can, of course, always decide to randomize it more or less. Oh yeah, and forgot also the, the tilt axis. So if you want to tilt completely the, the axis and tilt the equator, you can do it on one direction or the other. So with that you can really have planet that is uh, half cold, half hot, uh, like you've seen on some science fiction uh, movies. So for instance I can do that and then I change the spread center here. So you, you can have, uh, I can change a bit more like this and increase the temperature on the equator and the spreading like this. See and reduce a bit on the pole. Uh, okay, so I can do uh, half and half uh, planet like that. So it's really up to you to, to tune that as you wish. I will put it back to the default uh, values here. And um, also here the, temp the spreading on the poles and on the equator. Okay. And this temperature will be used to define where we will place the ice caps and the dessert in the planet. So I will go back to the material and here with the ice caps, I can just check have ice caps and it define the zone where the ice caps is or are. Um, with the weather here, if I increase the, the spreading of the temperature on the pole, this will increase the zone where you have the eye caps. You can change that as you wish and uh, everything has a direct effect 
on the ice caps here. So if I change the spread center, then uh, you can change that very easily. So what else do we have in uh, ice caps? Well, the ice caps is defined by a noise and by some parameters you have on the limit of the ice cap. So the noise, it's the, all the basic uh, noise we have here and it's defining the randomness you have over here. So if I change uh, the roughness, you see you, you have more rough or more straight uh, limit on the ice caps. And you can change everything, uh, the scale and all the usual parameter of the noise type, etc. Then you have uh, in the cold zone, you have some control on the expansion of the ice. It will never go uh, further than the cold zone. So this is really the limit of the cold zone. But uh, basically you say, you're say you saying that I will have ice caps for everything uh, under zero degree. And if you change the ice expansion, it's ice caps where it's under minus 10, minus 20, etc. You can change also the, the sharpness of the shape you have here. So if I increase the sharpness, you can have some aliasing, but it can be solved by increasing the anti-aliasing when doing rendering in uh, edge uh, quality. So here you can change so the sharpness and if you have the sharpness to its minimum it's very soft the transition between the ice caps and the rest then you have the the randomness so this is basically where i will put ice caps randomly around the pole and you can change also the minimum and maximum of ice you have so if i reduce the maximum that means that I will never have more than uh, half uh, the ice I got on the on even on the poles. Same goes for the minimum. If I increase the minimum, there will be a bit of ice everywhere, or more ice. If I want to ice to have ice on the full planet, I can change that. And the last parameter, which is also quite important is the slope influence. So if you have a very strong slope influence, you will have ice only where it's it can uh, deposit snow. So it's more on the flat part of the of the terrain. And if I decrease the slope influence, you will have something much smoother, but which does not take the, the slope of the terrain into account. It's always better to have something above uh, 0.5 to have something working well. And then you can colorize the, the ice uh, with a color ramp as usual. And uh, you can still play with the color bias to just uh, move in that, uh, in that color range. You can color from slope instead of uh, coloring from uh, randomness. So this will use the slope to color the, the ramp. So you see you have different color here because you have a stronger slope. And you can also change the roughness. Uh, so how uh, shiny is the, is the ice. So I will put here uh, the, the light source in that direction to see it. So here if I change the roughness, so you, you can see it will, if you increase it will be more rough, so it will spread more the specular part of the lighting. If I reduce it, it will be more a mirror like. So it will be very, very shiny. Okay, and um, maybe I will reduce a bit the, the expansion of the ice here. Uh, 
and uh, you can do exactly the same with the dessert so the dessert is just uh, a zone where you have you can have different color for the land different color for the the water if you remember uh, you have uh, the hot color here and uh, you can change also the color of the the, the sediment of the vegetation etc for the land it's just in the relief tab you have the mountains color and the mountain in desert. So this is the color used when you are in the desert part. So let's say that I want to change that to blue. Uh, you see it's changing here where you have the desert. So you can really change that as you wish. I will change a bit the, the color to something more, let's say yellow bit saturated like that okay so the dessert is exactly the same as the ice uh, caps you have also the expansion of the dessert the sharpness the randomness and the minimum and maximum and you can also say I want to have the dessert only on the flat part of the planet. So with that, you can really control the, the, the way you want to have uh, desertic places, uh, ice caps, and um, basically the climate of your, uh, of your planet. And all of these are just uh, driven by the weather tab. So in the weather tab, let's say if I increase the temperature on the equator, it will increase the size of the dessert. If I change the spreading, it will increase and this will force a reduction also of the, um, of the ice caps. And all the parameters are visible directly. So like the, if I tilt the axis, you'd see the, the poles changing place. Uh, if you change the, the randomness, uh, oops, if you change the randomness, you can see directly the result. And if you change the center of the planet, well, basically where the equator is, it's also changing everything. So it's quite quite easy, quite straight to, to manipulate. And by fine-tuning the the colors and the and the parameters you can have something quite uh, realistic.